Today, we turn our radar on Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory created by the FCT Act in 1976 and became Nigeria's official capital in December 1991. One of the biggest achievements of the FCT administration is the Abuja Master Plan, originally designed for 1 million people, but over time, its population has risen to 6 million, becoming one of the fastest growing cities in the world and Africa's fastest. Can the FCT administration deliver on the Abuja Master Plan? It's question time. Welcome to the program. I'm Benga Ashiru. You may also join in this conversation by sending us a comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. As the seat of power, Abuja is home to most of the public servants in Nigeria. Adding to the population increase, this seems to be the first of the many challenges confronting the FCT administration. This includes erection of illegal structures, high cost of accommodation, environmental challenges, insufficient infrastructure, and poor maintenance of existing ones. To bring this issue into perspective, Channel's television cut up with the FCT Minister, Mohamed Bello, in this exclusive interview. Join us. Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Bello, thank you for joining us on this episode of Question Time. My pleasure. Now, let's go straight to the heart of the story, uh, the Abuja Master Plan. Successive administrations have come with their versions of what the Abuja Master Plan should be. Now, what is the trust of this current administration on this draft of the Abuja Master Plan? What should Nigerians expect? Are they toying in a different direction? Are they continuing with this draft? People talk about the Abuja Master Plan because Abuja from conception has been a city that has been planned from scratch. As a matter of fact, it is the only city in Nigeria that is a creation of law. It was created by law in 1976, 40 years ago. As time went by, there was a master plan that decided, or rather that projected how the city was going to be as the years rolled by. To a large extent, the plan has been achieved and also the plan had within its structure the fact that as time goes on it will be reviewed from time to time. Previous administrations have looked at the plan, made adjustments to take into account the expansion of the city demographic realities and also other considerations that were not envisaged when the plan was conceived. Government, as you know, is a continuum. Our intention is at the appropriate time in the not distant future, we'll also sit down with the relevant experts and of course stakeholders of the city to look at the city, see what aspects of the plan has been achieved where challenges were encountered, and then have a general consensus as to what we expect the city to be, let's say 10 years down the road, or even 15, 20 years down the road. Since you took on the baton of spearheading the draft of the Abuja Master Plan, what are the scenic signposts that Nigerians should expect from your initiative? I think what we've tried to do during the last few months that I've come in you know, and of, of course the professionals I met on ground as well, is to try to run the city efficiently, to really run a city, especially a city that has grown beyond expectation and imagination in terms of population size and all the other activities that are related to that, such as traffic, you know, vehicular movements, and even the massive expansion in terms of uh, infrastructure and buildings of residential and commercial properties. So first and foremost, our focus really is to run the city. And when you run a city, what does that mean? It means you want to have an efficient transport system. You want to have, you want to have a very efficient uh, waste management system. And of course, you want basic amenities to be available for the population water, good health care services, and education services. And what we have tried to do during the last few months 
And I think the focus will continue until the end of my assignment here as minister, is to ensure that we strengthen the institutions that are meant to provide these services. And that's why, if you notice, we've made administrative changes. We are emphasizing more on compliance and a lot of advocacy also. Because to run a city of the size of Abuja, every stakeholder has to key in. Because we as government provide the environment and engage the organization that will provide the services. And then don't forget that the city is not just Abuja itself. The city and territory comprises of other satellite towns and area councils. The increasing rate of building collapse in Abuja is one tragic story that has raised a lot of questions on the Abuja master plan. I would not agree with you that there is an increasing trend because as far as I'm aware, we had a building collapse about a week ago, 10 days ago, in one of the estates, uh, Gwarimpa Estate, run by the Federal Housing Authority, and then some other collapse in one of the area councils. But statistically, one wouldn't say it's, it's, it's high, but, but of course every collapse is, is something of great concern. And with each incident, we look at institutional weaknesses and reasons why they occurred. For instance, the, the building collapse that occurred at Gorimpa Estate uh, happened uh, simply because of uh, institutional weaknesses. Uh, I understand and we are investigating and a full report is coming out of it. But with that particular incident and other incidences in the past, uh, efforts are now being made to ensure that uh, the relevant regulatory organizations meant to police and monitor compliance with all building regulations are strengthened. Uh, from this particular incident, it turned out that that particular building did not go through the thorough professional system of the FCTA Development Control Department because it was conceived, supervised, and, uh, and, 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 and regulated by some department within the Federal Housing Authority. But with this incident now, it is very clear that uh, the administration will continue to insist that all properties within the FCTA are supervised, monitored, and, 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 and overall progress you know, looked upon by the relevant FCT departments. And that's what the law says, actually. So you see, usually as you develop institutions, incidences like this tends to give opportunities for people to reflect and strengthen the institution. Regarding this recent case of building collapse, would we say that it's a clear case of lack of political will? No, no, I think it's, it's not an issue of political will, you know, because it's straightforward. Uh, I mean, this is a building that was obviously being badly constructed. The engineers that were monitoring the building clearly noticed that and gave a stop order. But somehow, the contractor did not comply with the stop order immediately until after a few weeks. And unfortunately, what, what occurred occurred on that day. So it's not, the, it's not the issue of political will, because I think the will is there already. They gave a stop order. Maybe they should have gone a step further to have maybe initiated proceedings against the contractor to ensure that that stop order was complied with. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, how does the FCT Ministry intend to tackle erection of illegal structures in Abuja? Find out from the FCT Minister when we return. <laughs> 